Whoa. What a I've got two call of shames to get to that we're gonna that we're gonna play here live on the No Stay Project. And uh wow, these <sighs> Internal Revenue Service, America's terrorist organization, it's not the only one. Uh they're one of many that come under the blanket of the government. And I said that they are a terrorist organization because of course terrorism we know is the use of threats of violence and actual violence to bring about political action and change, and of course, that's what they do. People call government force you to pay them, and through their agents, the Internal Revenue Service, they're the ones that are actually got the boots on the ground. They're the ones that are actually stealing from you. They're the ones that are terrorizing people. Uh, so uh, we're going to be dealing with that with this call of shame. It's, um, I guess one of the reasons why I want to put these on there, because we're getting quite a number of these embarrassing calls with just the IRS, and um, it's only a fraction of the ones I get. These these were very short, so they were easier to edit. And But they, 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 they brought out a couple of things that uh, I, I wanted to have on the website so that people could understand that I'm not just making uh, uh, hyperbole sta- you know, statements just for shock effect or to get an audience. Yeah, there's a shock. Um, <laughs> we're, not, uh, we're not too concerned with the numbers here. I know, I know. I, I, I get it. Um, but uh, this demonstrates very clearly the callous nature. So you get the two aspects of psychopaths, so, uh, sociopathic personality flaws, and that is the absolute lack of empathy that they just don't give a damn. I mean, they absolutely do not give a damn. And it is the constant lying, the constant lying. And together with the fact that they don't like being challenged at all, and so when we call them and are asking for facts to support their arguments, they get very upset. So, the, so there's two calls here. One's with a woman, and then the second one's with uh, a man. And, and I, I kind of put them together, and I'll play that in the next segment. Uh, but uh, Keep those three things in mind. We have the massive ego, the narcissistic personality. They do not like to be challenged. They lie incessantly. And they have no empathy. They just don't give a damn. That, that's your core psychopath right there. And the first woman, right out of the... Out of the and, and again, I do cut out all the personal information and get right to the meat of the call. She's hostile right from the very beginning. I mean, she just couldn't give a damn. We want the returns filed. The only way to solve, solve this is you have to file the returns. So when I ask her if, she's got, if she can confirm that there's evidence proving that the Constitution and code apply and that there's jurisdiction to even require a return, she uses a typical diversion tactic and says, oh, I'm not going to talk to you about the law, and I'll have to send you to the, to the law, you know, the, the, the tax law department, which is, a, 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 which is a, um, a general number, and they will tell you right there they can't discuss things like that. They even discuss it in, adventures, in uh, government indicted. Uh, so it's just a diversion tactic. And uh, she gets increasingly more hostile until she just hangs up the phone. She lies, though, because even though she can't discuss the law or the facts that, I'm, you know, she can't confirm that there's any evidence the laws apply in the first place, she continues to insist that a return is required. That is a lie. She knows that. Now, on the next call, this is great. This is some admission. You're going to love this when we get to that. We'll talk about it after I play the, the, play the call uh, in the next segment, of course. I'm asking him directly for the evidence. Now, this guy didn't start out as hostile, but he got pretty hostile and slammed the phone down. Because like I say, when you force people to pay you, you don't need to have evidence of anything. So when I ask him for the facts, if he can confirm, he doesn't try to uh, make excuses. Well, the first time he does. The second time, he comes flat out and, and admits... See, well, the first time he div- tries to divert the attention, say, I'm not going to argue politics with you or discuss politics with you, which why... Yeah, that's just a, a red herring. He's just lying. It's a false statement. I'm not asking him about politics. I'm just asking for the facts. So when he asks, when I ask the question a second time, he gives me a direct answer, and I believe, and, and I think he was actually telling the truth here. He says, "I'm talk. You're talking way over my head. I don't have an answer to that question." And the question, of course, is, "Do you have any evidence to prove that there's jurisdiction to require a return?" Now he admits it was way over his head. He doesn't have an answer to the question. He cannot prove jurisdiction, but he's insisting the laws still apply. You see, there's the psychopath in action. Normal people with normal coping skills, when they say, 
you're talking way over my head. I don't have an answer to that question. Normal people stop what they're doing. Remember, they're taking this guy's money. They're threatening to take even more of his money, and they're threatening to escalate. So instead of putting the brakes on, like normal people do, no, the psychopath gets upset, slams the phone down, and then sits by as the situation escalates without a care in the world that is damaging somebody. This is not just a huge due process violation, because they're supposed to have evidence that there's jurisdiction before they do anything. But then, when it comes out, and he knows and admittedly has no evidence of jurisdiction, then to continue going, uh, that's what even the Supreme Court has called theft or robbery under the guise of the tax laws, because he can't use the tax laws as as, as a justification for his theft or his robbery, because when you ask him questions regarding the evidence that those laws apply, that's way over his head. He doesn't have an answer. He has no evidence. He doesn't have a shred of proof that there's any jurisdiction at all. And that's why one of the main reasons, that's why these facts, it's this behavior pattern that has been demonstrated over and over and over and over again with these agents, which you, if you disagree with with me, fine. You can replicate and get the same responses from these people. And it doesn't matter whether it's the IRS or the CRA or you're talking to someone in, in, in England or Australia. It's the same thing. They are psychopaths. They're antisocial. They do not give a damn. It doesn't matter. They are callous and cruel. They don't care about the evidence. They don't give a damn. And they will continue lying as if they have the jurisdiction. So if if someone disagrees with me and you think that that that's not evidence that they're psychopaths just because they don't give a damn and they're lying and that they don't handle uh, challenge well, give us a call. We're at 218-632-9399, 218-632-9399. I love to hear uh, your evidence to the contrary. Again, my name is Mark Stevens of the No State Project. We'll have the call to shame in the next segment, so don't go away. We'll be back. You're going to love this. You're going to like love hearing way over my head. Well, so from this call, I'm going to have to suggest, request that you try to get those returns in for 11 through 13 within 30 days if possible, because what could happen is we could file those returns for you using our own figures without any consideration of any dependent or um, um, other deductions. Now, Ms. what we could do from well, this call... Go well, ahead. Ms. Ms. let me ask you a question, yes, and so we can strike uh-huh. at the root of this uh, and maybe get closer to a resolution since you're, you're talking okay. about an escalation. Can you confirm, uh-huh. just yes or no, can you confirm that there are facts proven that the Constitution and U.S. Code apply to and that the IRS has any jurisdiction to even require a return? Yeah, we, 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 wait, we, we wait, need wait, a return wait, file. Sir, wait, sir, wait. I'm not going through all... You're going to have to call the tax law line to do no, all no, that. No, 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 that's so, a diversion yeah, tactic. Don't do that. Ma- ma'am, no, I, that, that, let me finish. Sir, I, 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 I want to no. write that down. I'm just writing your answer down. Yes, okay. you're saying yes to my question. I, you saying, can't... I, I am you're saying, interrupting. I am saying... I, I'm sorry if, if, if the middle of my statement w- was interfering with the beginning of yours... I'm, I'm trying to go one step at a time here, so please, let, let's just have a, a rational discourse here, a professional discussion. My question was... But let me tell you this, though, first, okay? It, I, I'm only going to talk to you about withholding issue. That's what we talk about on this line, the W-4, okay? If you want to talk about tax laws, I'm supposed to transfer you over to the... Line. No, I, I'm not doing okay? that. I'm not doing that, so please Well, I'm please telling don't... you what I'm going to do. She's interrupting again. You, you please don't don't and don't tell me and threaten me with hanging up the phone. Uh, we we. T- no, I, I didn't say that. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not I, even going to threaten I'm heading, you. I'm just going to do it. It's a preempt. Oh, oh. Well, that's that's my yeah, nice. Yeah, because because I've already told you what what <sighs> what, what this line is going. We're going to talk about. Ma'am, you're the one who brought up the SFR and the filing of the returns. So you've already made right. a determination. It's, seems. No, because that She's that's what I'm again. supposed to tell you. Well, my question though is, and I'm, uh, you said yes when I uh, to my question. Uh, that, so let me just see if I understand you correctly. You are confirming that there are facts proving the Constitution and code apply, and that the IRS has jurisdiction to require a return. I need a return to be filed for eleven through thirteen, sir. So, you're, are you convinced that there are facts proving the IRS has jurisdiction to require a return? You see how 
a simple question she hangs up. Thank goodness we, we uh, didn't take that long to get through. So let me just see what years I'm missing here. Do we already know that? We've already gone through it with the previous agent. And let me just ask you real quick, sir, before we get into some questions. Uh, is this the Long Island office? Massachusetts. Okay. Well, no, I'm talking to I'm talking to the uh, taxpayer right now. Is he still is he there? Actually, you're you're speaking to Mark Stevens, and that's part of the problem that he's been erroneously labeled a taxpayer, and and that's what we want to we want to address. Erroneously labeled a taxpayer. What does that mean? It means he's been falsely labeled a taxpayer without any kind of evidentiary support to support the allegation. So let me ask you, like I, I just all right, we're done with this call. Thank you. Have a nice no, no, day. don't hang up. No, I'm not, I'm not interested in this nonsense. You've already well, talked well, well, to somebody, right? Have you supervised right? your call? Have you, we've been on hold. Uh, no, no, no. I, I'll, I'll, oh. Well, you know, Are you really, going to refuse the um, supervisor call back? Are you going to refuse to discuss the issue I'll with I'll tell me? the supervisor to call you back. Call back within 24 hours. Is that okay? Uh, that's fine. You don't need to hang up on me, though. Let me ask you the question. Right, then let's, let's you, work the case. you can hang I, up I, after I, I ask I, you the question. Uh, Let me ask you the question. Then you can decide whether you're going to be rude and hang up the phone. Can you confirm that there are facts proving the Constitution code apply to and that there's any jurisdiction to even require a return from him? I'm not going to get into politics. The IRS has the right to monitor withholdings if they feel that the tax that we're not receiving the proper tax. There is a letter I could send to your client, to the taxpayer who I was speaking to, and can I speak to him? Well, do you, not, you didn't actually I, you, answer you my have, question. You might, I'm not asking right. you about politics. It's an evidentiary question. So there are two different things. This is so yes or no. Can you confirm that there are facts proving the Constitution code apply to him, and that you, the IRS, has any jurisdiction even require a return? No, you're talking way over my head. I don't know the answer well, to those well, questions. Way, way over. Okay, my so head. thank me, you and have, no, have no, a no, good don't evening. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. That's rude. That's just mean. Don't do that. Well, I don't want to talk this kind of thing. I talk, we're talking with holdings. Way over That's my head. That's what we're discussing. I, 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 is your, your client there? Was he, uh, did the person discuss the withholding issue with him? I'm looking at the notes here. We, we, are, the we are discussing it. So whether there's jurisdiction to require a return is way over your head. So you're really not qualified to say he's required to file a return. And you're not qualified to say whether he's a taxpayer. Is he different or not. than anybody else in the country? That's that, why he's. Why is he not qualified to file a return if everybody else is now? Well, that's your opinion that everybody else is. It's a gross generalization. That's like saying that everybody who's Irish is a drunk, uh, or like me, I'm I'm Sicilian. That everybody who's Sicilian, oh, we must be in the mafia. Well, let me just stop you right there. They already sent the letter to you. I'm just looking at the last person you talked to. All right, let me just read what it says. I don't need to hear We're not that. going to discuss any tax law issues. I, I didn't ask that. If IRS has authority requests for returns to be filed, 2011 to 2013 needed. He provided you the 30-day time frame to file. We issued you a 3042C letter issued would be the letter that would explain the IRS's, the IRS codes stating that the IRS has a response, you know, the, yeah, the but, reasons we have, yeah, whatever. But, but whether, and whether then the, those... call was, the call was ended. Does your text, does your client want to discuss withholdings for correction? Is he being locked in at the single and zero rate? What we want to discuss, okay, is that you are not able to confirm, because it's way over your head, whether the IRS's jurisdiction even require the return. All right, so this is a prior action. I am definitely disconnecting this call. Thank you, sir. You don't need to do that. No need to be rude. Okay, you can... Oh, well. Did he do it? Yeah, he, he hung up. 